So for this particular bottle opener, we're going to need about a 6 inch section in the center that remains square. For the bottle opening end, we're going to need about a 4 inch section flattened and tapered from the 3 8 inch square down to oh maybe a sixteenth of an inch, an even taper. On the other end, we're going to need about six inches for this large loop and curl at the end. So what I have on the anvil here is I actually have inches marked off. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I know for the short end, pretty much where the taper needs to begin. One, two, three, four inches. And on the long end, about six inches. And I keep this piece laying around just for reference purposes uh, only. And I keep the measuring tape handy for a quick measurement if I need it. Let's get our ear protection on and get our stock out of the fire pot and begin hammering this thing. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to prepare the tip of the bottle cap opener. I want to make it flat and then I want to use a ball peen hammer to make an indentation in it so it fits better around the neck of the bottle. Ball pin end to kind of create a con. 
cave tip. Okay, that looks good. I usually uh, take, at this point in time, the opportunity to chamfer the edges a little bit. It's a lot easier to do it now it is to wait until after the, the bend is in the piece. Also what I like to do is clean the scale off before I turn the scroll over. really soft at this point in time. You can see just by brushing it, it tends to want to roll over. I usually keep an old bottle sitting around with a cap on it so I can test Went and got my scrolling tongs just to kind of tweak this thing a little bit to get the bend where I want it. You want to mark where you want it to start folding back over on itself. Mark enough to show where the radius has to go and you can pull out your sample piece if you like.
bend it until it comes around and touches the back side. What I like to do at this point is begin chamfering the edges. Okay, now that we got the bottle cap side fairly well finished, we're going to go ahead and uh, start working on the handle end of this guy. So what I'm doing now is I'm just fine-tuning, making sure I got all the scale off the item. My battery died on my camera, so I had to continue working. And what I did was I brought the long section, the six inch section of the handle and basically on the anvil here, just using a small ball peen hammer, I brought it around and kept working it in until the scroll met up with the bottle cap scroll on the front side. Using a low heat here, I'm putting some finishing texturing onto the sides of the handle. And I'm going to give it one more heat, brush the scale off, and then we're going to, we're going to put our brass finish on it. I'm not going to wire brush this on a wire wheel or anything like that. 
after it cools down, this will be the final finish on this opener. Give it one last check for flatness here. Too hard because that'll destroy your texturing. And you don't want it looking too perfect because if it looks too perfect, then it looks machine made and not handmade. Do this one. Check it with the bottle here. And that's kind of what I want. So now that you've got it pretty much fine-tuned, just take a brass brush and lightly, while it's still hot, highlight the edges. Kind of like a dry brushing technique here. You, don't want, you want to keep some of the black hammered look. And all you want is just to highlight the edges of the twist. There you go. Now, we want to do the, the wax portion of it. So like I mentioned uh, earlier in the video, I just have this rag that's good for wiping or you can put the opener down inside the uh, can of wax, let it melt and then put some on your steel wool. Get into all the cracks and the crevices. Switch sides here. There you have it. Okay, um, the, the final step in the process is your cleanup. So, the way to stop a coal or a coke fire is basically to pull all of the coals out of the, the pot 
and um, just kind of spread it out on your forage table and the fire will go out. So it'll take a while for the, the pot to cool down. Um, the, the coke pieces cool down right away. Um, but what I wanted to show you is that I already pulled all the coke out and I kind of went through the, uh, the coke pile to look for clinkers. And what I'm doing is uh, just getting as part of the cleanup ready for um, the next forge operation by getting all the clinkers out of my fuel here. Now, what I wanted to show you is that we today we were burning for about two hours. Um, the video obviously isn't two hours, but the coke fire was burning for about two hours. And during that time, all of the clinkers that formed today are right here. Now a clinker are all the impurities that are coming out of the coke. Now coal has a lot more impurities in it because it has been coked yet. Whereas the coke has very some impurities but not a lot. You can hear that metallic sound. It's kind of like a metal sound. Oh, you can hear it better on this shovel versus a coke piece. Got more of a metallic ringing. So, this is one of the reasons I like burning coke, which is actually cheaper than coal. Um, and the reason it's cheaper is because a lot of people don't like it because it's hard to start. Well, as you saw in the beginning of the video, it didn't take a whole heck of a lot to get this fire gone. And that's all of the clinkers that today's burn produced. Um, you don't want to have any clickers in your fire during your burn because even though it's glowing red, it looks really nice and hot, it's stealing heat from your project. There it goes into the ash can. So my, uh, my forge basically is ready to go. I keep an old brush around because I like to get all of the dust off of the table and keep it out of the fire. Um, every two or three operations I'll go in and lift the pot a little bit up and get all of the, the ashes from around the pot. Get it all nice and cleaned up so they have nothing but Coke pieces on the table in the next turn. My, uh, my Coke pot or forge pot is not permanently mounted in the table. And I designed it that way purposely so that I could take it apart for repairs or modifications. Um, as required. So that's it for uh, today's video. There's our bottle opener. The next time I'll do a video on making one of these railroad spike bottle openers. Basically performs the same function, just a little bit different. This one fits in your hand. The twist that I have in it, kind of your fingers fit right in it, pop your bottle cap right off. So, from Carriage House Metalworks, uh, thanks for uh, watching today, and please come back.